If you are ready to take your lessons to the next level and get the students to take more ownership of their learning, then stick around because I'll be giving you tips and strategies on how to empower your students with choice boards during the elaborate phase of the 5E model. In my 5E guide, I go over how student choice and choice boards are a great way to differentiate during the elaborate phase of the 5E model. And today we're gonna go right into that and dive into that a little deeper. You see, choice boards are an easy way to get started with differentiating and meeting the different needs of the students in your class. The students get to choose what they want to work on and how they want to extend their learning. And they get to do things that they're interested in. So it brings in their student interest. There are different ways that you can do choice boards and you can get started slowly by offering just a few choices if you want to. One way to do it is through audio. You could have the students do a podcast or they could write a song. They could research more information about the topic and put it into a podcast or create a song about what they're learning about. Those are some nice ways. Another way is through video. Students can go onto Flipgrid and do a video with their face, explaining what they're learning, explaining new information they discovered. They could do a screencast where they're showing someone how to go through maybe an online simulation, or they could do an iMovie. An iMovie, if you have Macs or kids have iPads or iPhones, they could do a movie trailer about what they're learning about. Another thing they can do is a 3D model. For those students that like to build things and you know work with their hands, creating a 3D model of what they're doing and then explaining that 3D model is a great way for those students. You could also have them teach a mini lesson. If there is something that they discovered and they're really excited about, have them teach the students about it. Have them maybe uh, create a little PowerPoint presentation, perhaps a little handout to go with it, maybe a quizzes game to go afterwards to test the students on whether or not they learned anything from that little mini lesson. Getting them up in front and being the teacher for the day is a great way to build those relationships with your students. You could also have for your writers out there, the ones who love to write and are creative in their writing, have them write a book. If you have them write a book for students that are maybe four or five grades lower, they might be writing a picture book for those that might be in early elementary age. Or if these are high school students, they could be writing um, a book for a fifth grader where there'd be some pictures, more definitions, and taking it through um, what they're learning. So creating a book for them. For those that are artistic and love to do more of the artsy type, you could have them make an infographic. This can easily be done in Canva and there is a free educators um, Canva site that you can go to and use all those tools and the students can then create it all. Here's the best part though. Don't make it hard on yourself. Just because you have students doing different things does not mean that you have to have many different ways of grading. Just create one rubric. That's it. One rubric that is designed to be able to check off all the boxes no matter what they decide to do. Have it where that no matter what they choose, however they're gonna choose to extend their learning, that they have to hit certain guidelines about the topic and have the, you know, the creativity, the effort, the pride in their work. Having that one rubric is really going to help you. Also, just because you're offering all these student choices does not mean that you have to create all these different directions. You yourself do not have to be an expert in any of this. No, 
You don't have to know how to use iMovie. You don't have to know how to create an infographic on Canva. And you don't have to know how to do a podcast. Let the students figure it out. What a perfect opportunity for some real life lessons and learning where if the students want to do an iMovie, great. How is that done? Have them research how it's done. Look it up. Find YouTube videos or Google um, websites that go onto websites that show how to use iMovie. If they want to do a podcast, awesome, great. How can that be done? Can they do it on we video and just uh, record the audio portion of it? Can they record their voice using Google apps? What can they do? Have them research all of that. Let them take all the control of figuring out how to do it. Your job during this time, and this is the best part, your job is just to be the facilitator, the coach. When they get stuck, give them prompting questions. What do you think you should do? Have you looked at different websites? Have you looked up um, YouTube videos? What are they saying? What is so-and-so over there doing? You know, students, if they're doing the same thing, have them get together and talk and discuss what they're learning. So your job is just to facilitate. That's the beauty of differentiating is that when you allow students to take ownership of their learning, when you give them choice, it doesn't mean it's extra work for the teacher. It actually can be less work because you don't have to create all the the directions. You don't have to be an expert in any of this. You can just let them figure it out. And guess what? The first few times it's going to happen, yeah, they're going to make some major mistakes. It might flop and that's all right also because this is all a learning opportunity for you and for the students. And the next time they do it, you know, they're going to do better. They're going to have uh, a better result as an outcome. So offering student choice during the elaborate phrase phase, it really is a great way to differentiate. It's a nice, easy way for you to differentiate because all you need to do is figure out what is the end goal I want to have happen? What do I want the students to be able to do by the end of this? So you make your, uh, your, your goals, your objectives, you create a rubric that is designed around them and you can find lots of rubrics to get you started on it. You know, if you just search, search rubrics for choice boards, you're going to find so many out there. You will. And so just use that to guide you. Have that ready to go. The students have the rubric to go off of. Give that at the very beginning. Have them choose what they want to do group them with students who are doing similar things. And if there's a student who's doing one on their own, that's fine too. And then give them time to do it. You know, this would be something that I wouldn't do it at home the whole time. I would give them two or three days in class to work on this. This is something I'd want them to see. I'd want them to be able to struggle with support of fellow students and myself helping them along the way. Perhaps after three days, then yes, maybe two more days at home to finish it and finalize it and break, and then come in to present. That might be fine. Um, but you do want to give them at least two days where they're figuring everything out. They're learning how to do uh, whatever choice they chose to do. They're f- doing the um, creation part of it and they're doing it while they can ask someone else for help with the support of everyone. So that's how you can differentiate and take your lessons to the next level. Your students will have fun. You will have fun, less stress on you, more engagement with the students. Now, if you're interested in more ideas for the 5E model and how to implement it in your classroom, go ahead and grab that free 5E guide that I created. I take you through all the parts of the 5E model, the importance of it, um, what the students should be doing, what the teacher's goal is during it, and then I go into how to create your lessons 
to design around that you already have, your lessons you already have, how to tweak them a little bit, put them into the 5e model. And I do give um, an example lesson unit that I have done myself. So have a wonderful day and let me know if you're going to try this out and how it goes. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.